Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father of all that is good and all that is holy, in you we live and move and have our being. And each day you show us a Father's love, and we thank you for the love with which you have gathered us together here tonight. As we commend to you Shanley's graduating class of 2017. We ask you to be with them and watch over them and bless them. Allow them to know of your great and unquenchable and unconditional love for them. Give them the graces that they need to fulfill the mission, the purpose, the calling, the vocation that you have for each one of them. And always help them to know that you have chosen them to go out and make a difference in this world for you. Finally, dear Lord, we pray that all of us gathered here today will be reunited with you and with each other in our eternal home of heaven. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, with the prayers of our lady and all the angels and saints, you are God forever and ever, amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hello, my name is Lucas Johnson, and it is my honor to welcome Bishop Folda, members of the clergy, Mr. Hagstrom, faculty, family, friends, and finally, the graduating class of 2017. This is an amazing achievement for each of us to have made it here today, and I am proud to share in this moment with all of you. First, I would like to thank every one of my classmates. Today is a day to remember our wonderful time here at Shanley. The memories we have made together will be unforgettable. Whether it was freshman religion and the numerous attempts at humor made by the one and only Mr. Hagstrom, or the many times we quickly walked to get to lunch first, it is many times, or it's times that, like these that I will never forget. Aside from all the memories made here, I will always cherish the relationships I have made as well. Through our four years here, I believe that we have become more than friends. We are a family. Although we may be heading our separate directions, I know that I will not or I will f not forget anyone. Thank you, every one of you. Finally, I wish you all the best of luck in the future. May God bless whatever path you choose to follow. Congratulations, class of 2017.
Hello, my name is Maddie Chera, and I am the senior class vice president. It is my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker tonight, Carrie Brock. Mrs. Brock has been a consistently bright and happy presence in our school for 24 years. She spent 22 years teaching on the middle school side, teaching social studies and geography, and now she teaches US history and government on the high school side. Some of us have been blessed to have Mrs. Brock as a teacher for four years, and we believe she has served as a wonderful example of what it means to be a deacon through her kindness, wisdom, faith, and selflessness. The senior class asked Mrs. Brock to speak today because she taught us much more than history. She taught us to be open, to think critically, to keep promises, and most, most importantly, to be ready. <clears throat> Daily quizzes. I'm honored to introduce our 2017 commencement speaker, Mrs. Brock. Good evening, and congratulations to all of you, the Shanley High School class of 2017. I'd like to begin tonight by sharing with you my favorite Bible passage, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. The plans I have in mind for you, Seniors, <clears throat> speaking to you tonight was not my plan. I'm not a risk taker. I don't enjoy public speaking. And when I saw my name on the ballot to choose your commencement speaker, my first thought was, uh-oh. It was quickly followed by, why me? I can't, and isn't there a better option? And perhaps the most honest worry of all, you know that I'll cry. I told many of you that after four years in the classroom, I couldn't possibly have anything left to say. So over the past few weeks, some of you offered suggestions. <clears throat> we could collectively sing the preamble. I could leave daily slips in the entrance for one last quiz. I could call on random people to name at least 10 cabinet departments and list all of the national holidays. Those didn't seem like viable options, so I started to give some serious thought to what I could say that might be a meaningful message at such an important time in your lives. In the end, I realized that I have learned a lot over the past couple of years, and I'm hoping that my experiences might just provide some lessons for you and I'm keeping the tissues nearby, just in case. First piece of advice, remember that it's not always about you. That might seem like an odd thing to say to a group of accomplished individuals who are in many ways the focus of so much attention right now. We often think of ourselves first, that was my first reaction when I thought that I might be asked to speak this evening. Why me and I don't have anything to say? But really, it's not about me. Years ago, a teacher drilled that lesson home. When I was a sophomore at Shanley, my religion teacher's name was Brother Henry. I remember that he used to draw two circles on the board. One circle was very small, the other was huge. He drew arrows showing movement toward the larger circle. He would write the word me in the small circle and the word others in the larger one. Frankly, it was a little annoying that he drew those same circles all year, but obviously it worked in that I remember it. He wanted us to learn to move away from the focus on me and more toward others. I don't know that I will ever have completely learned that lesson, but I want you to know that it's the reason that I made the move from Sullivan to Shanley. It wasn't at all about me, rather about all of you. I don't speak publicly about this very much, but teaching high school was never part of my plan. I love teaching middle school. I loved you as middle school students. I was comfortable and I loved what I did. But then Mr. Rusted died 
I was shaken. He was my teacher in his first years at Shanley, and with his passing, I lost my favorite teacher, along with a treasured colleague. It was suggested to me that maybe I should take over POD in US history, and I laughed. I knew that I could never fill Mr. Rusted's shoes. The thought faded, and time passed. But I kept thinking about you. I thought about the next generations of Shanley students who might not be able to recite the amendments or share in the misery of taking orals. And then I zeroed in on your class in particular. Once again, you see, I realized it wasn't about me. It was about Mr. Rusted's legacy, and it was about you. Could I perhaps serve some purpose in moving to the high school? I drifted in and out of self-doubt. I don't know enough. It will be so much work. The expectations are too high. I really don't know enough. But then I would focus again on you. Brother Henry's lesson resurfaced. It's not about me, it's about others. In this case, about you and what I could do for you. Which brings me to my second piece of advice. Just be there. Be present. What could I offer you that another new teacher couldn't? I couldn't turn back time to bring back those who were dear to us. But I could help honor a legacy. I could be a familiar presence in a room that you would probably associate with Mr. Rusted. Would it help ease the transition? Maybe. Whatever the next two years would bring, I knew that we would face it together. I probably don't have to tell you that the first days and weeks were rough. I was emotional. I was so nervous. Remember the troubles in those first few days? The heat? The smoke? The water leaking from the ceiling? I was working harder at school than I had in many years spending evening and weekend hours once again in the classroom. Was it worth it? And would I do it all over again? Absolutely. Every time that I thought it was too hard, I remembered that I was doing this for you. Isn't that what we are called to do for each other? Aren't there times when we simply need to just be there? Presence is important. In some ways, we're connected via technology more than ever before. But in the end, remember that nothing can replace your physical presence and full attention. There will be times in your life when it's easy to show up at a sporting event, a party, an impromptu gathering in a dorm room or the student union. But there will also be times when showing up is the last thing that you want to do. Maybe it's a funeral. Maybe a friend is going through a tough time. Maybe you fear that you won't have the right words to say and that you won't know what to do. But I truly believe that that is when you need to show up and just be. Silence is OK. You don't need to always have the right words. But your presence alone can speak volumes. Thinking back over these two years, I am certain that I did not have all the right words. I felt like I might be acting the role of a high school teacher and that you would think me to be some kind of imposter. But in the end, I just wanted to be there and hope that in some small way, that could be my gift to you. I've witnessed you doing the same for your classmates. Please continue to do so. Others need you. In addition to being there, Please remember to be authentically you. You really can't be anyone else. It was tempting for me to try to mimic my predecessor's style, but you knew me too well. Among the suggestions shared with me regarding tonight's address, the most common was a reminder to just be myself and that everything would be fine. Let me now remind you that you need to do the same. You already know a great deal about yourselves, and I am certain that you'll learn a lot more in the years ahead. I encourage you to find your passions and then own them. For me, I'm a history geek. I don't deny it. 
if it makes you smile that I really do get that excited about the amendments and current events, I'm okay with that. I'm also a mom through and through. I'm passionate about caring for kids, whether they're my biological kids or my school kids. That means I've handed out band-aids and reprimands, cough drops and advice. I've encouraged you to take a seat in the orals chair and tell me what was on your mind. I've cheered you on in the stands and chatted with you in the hallways and the lunch line. I've shared in your joys, your frustrations and sorrows. I've prayed for you. Moms and dads, I've tried to be there for your children every day and I feel like I have done my best. Sometimes, seniors, you would tease me and say, you're such a mom. But I'm okay with that. I embrace it. Find your passions and then live them out. If you're not quite sure of the next steps to take, remember those words from Jeremiah. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you. Ask God. There are others present tonight who could speak to this better than I ever could, but as I understand it, this verse is not about only trusting in God. It also requires that we pray, that we ask God about those future plans, and that we listen for his answer. If I hadn't done that, trusted in God's plan and not my own, then I wouldn't be at the podium here tonight. I would have missed out on the past two years as your teacher and all that came with it. Living through the oh-so-long 2016 presidential campaign and election, <laughs> enjoying this year's variety show, which, to my delight, incorporated a wild election, Abraham Lincoln and Cupid. I would have missed out on your fantastic homecoming prank and the creation of Camp Brock including a Jonas Brothers music marathon, I would have missed out on the ongoing debate over which Speaker of the House has nicer blue eyes. <laughs> and I would have missed out finding that you actually recited the 27 amendments as some sort of cheer at a volleyball game. <laughs> Nicely done. It's been such a fun ride. Who knew that taking a different path than expected would lead me to something that I love so much? Seniors, thank you for the gift of yourselves. Thank you for the part that you played in bringing me back to Shanley, for welcoming me into your lives for the second time, for inviting me to address you as a class one last time tonight. Thank you for your hard work and contributions over the past four years. Now it's time to go. Time for you to do what you are called to do. I don't know the plans God has for you, but I am certain that they do indeed hold a future of hope. I will miss you so much, and I wish you all the best. Congratulations, Shanley Class of 2017.
Bishop Folda, faculty, parents, family, and guests, it is my pleasure to present the class of 2017, the 135th graduating class of Shanley High School. Bishop Folda, these students have met the requirements set forth by the North Dakota Department of Instruction and Shanley High School and are eligible for graduation. Would the first row please stand? Joseph Michael Azaro. Claire Elizabeth Bath. Emily Ray Berglund. Mariah Catherine Bitson. Patrick Richard Boyle. Barry Scott Bradley. Sean Allen Braun. Madeline Rose Breen. Hannah Grace Brown. Matthew Sullivan Bird. Isabel Lillian Dabbert. Yishui Dai. Drew Landry Day. Samantha Joe Day. Justin Lewis DeKaiser. Brooklyn James Dew. Emily Joe Dietz. Grace Ann Dietz. Courtney Rose Donahue. Jeffrey Charles Donegan. Gabrielle David Dushek. Alexander Christian Agam. Taylor Renee Erholtz. Fletcher Patrick Flanagan. Jared Nash Fowler. Jacob Lynn Fritz. Jack Gordon Hager. Brandon Humal Hansen. Juliana Catherine Harms. Seth Joseph Harms. Levi Daniel Hartle. Emily Jo Heinrich. Zenhee Huang.
Hunter Ryan Jerolimic. Colby David Johnson. Lucas William Johnson. Kylie Alexis Conwisher. Jasper Landon Keller. <laughs> Madeline Margaret Chera. <laughs> Andrea Rose Kramer. <laughs> Mason Stephen Lance. Michael James Lapine the second <laughs> Leah Brianne Madsen <laughs> Hannah Signe Manns <laughs> Anya Gabrielle Martin Alexandra Isabella Martino. Hunter Allen Peter Mathias. Paige Elizabeth Matheson. Alexander Rhodes Mel. Megan Christine Miranda. Casey Sullivan Montgomery. Ryan Harrison Mark. Reed William Nelson. Kelly Christine Noah. Michael John Noah. Madison Rose Noison. Damian Richard O'Donnell. Michaela Renee O'Leary. <laughs> Maria Karina Pablo. <laughs> Jacob Aaron Reinholtz. <laughs> Catherine Marie Roberts. Danielle Dorothy Robert. Matthew Stephen Russell. Luke Timothy Sandy. Nicholas Wade Shones. Aaron Peter Seafelt. <laughs> Megan, 
Matthew Joseph Seafelt. Grace Louise Simonson. Andrew Freeman Tarnaski. Gabriel Vold Thomas. Grace Marie Ward. Austin Tyler Weigel. Arlene Catherine Weathern. Catherine Rachel Wold. Austin Joseph Yegi. Tyler Amadeus Zach. Parents, grandparents, guests, let's give our graduates another round of applause, please. I will now lead the class of 2017 in the graduates' prayer. Graduates, please stand. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Lord, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Gabe Thomas. I'm president of the class of 2017, and I'm honored to have been chosen as this year's graduation speaker. When I found out I would be speaking this year, I was admittedly quite nervous. I was honored that my classmates thought I would have something meaningful to share, but I had no idea what I could possibly say in such a short time about our incredible years together in school. So I needed some inspiration for the speech, and trust me, I searched high and low. So naturally, as one does, I turned to Amazon.com <laughs> and I picked up a copy of this book called How to Write and Give a Speech. The title seemed straightforward enough. Uh, you know, I thought it would do what I needed. So Mrs. Gord, you'll be happy to hear that I approached reading the book with the same skill set that I'd employed to get through many English class assignments over the years. I spark noted it. I was, however, dismayed to find that no such spark-noted version of this book existed. Hard to believe, I know. So I guess that idea was out. 
Left still with nothing to say and time running short, I turned to a tried and true source that I was sure would have the answer to what I should say. Over my school career, this source has played a pivotal role in my academic success and was always helpful when I had a question. When I looked to the source, however, I found that even it didn't have the answer to what I should say. That's right, for the first time in my school career, the answer was not on haiku. <laughs> All joking aside, I really did have no idea for quite some time what I could possibly say about our class that hadn't been said already. But as the days ticked by, I came to the realization that I should talk about one of the most unique aspects of our school community, our nickname, the Deacons. Thanks to freshman religion class, no graduate of Shanley will receive a diploma without knowing that Deacons is derived from Greek and means those who serve. I think tonight, fellow graduates, as our time at Shanley comes to a close, it is important to reflect on what the word deacon has meant in our time in school and how we can continue to be deacons even as we close this chapter of our lives. Our time in school has certainly been filled with a focus on academics and preparation for the future. In religion class, we've learned how to use the sacraments to be connected to God more closely. In English, we've learned valuable writing skills that will help us in our future careers. In government, we've learned how to be citizens that actively participate in our democracy. And thanks to calculus, we can now write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of h at t equals zero to approximate the temperature of a potato at t equals three. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Henderson. But despite all the academic knowledge we may have acquired in the classroom, teaching the total person, as our network's mission statement outlines, didn't simply come from traditional textbook learning. What we were taught during what for some of us was 12 years of Catholic education encompassed above all a spirit of service for others, a spirit that deacons are called to embrace. Whether it was through book buddies in elementary school, the start of religion service hours in middle school, our annual deacon day of service during homecoming week, or the incredible variety of school service we completed in senior year religion class. Not a year has passed where we have not been reminded of what it means to be a deacon. Above all fellow graduates, I think we have nothing greater to be thankful for than this. The spirit of service in our school has formed us as people. It has helped us become people who look for others in need and find ways to help them. It has helped us form relationships with friends built not on self-centered motives, but rather on self-giving ideals. Learning to live a life of service has allowed us to build an incredibly strong community dedicated to giving back and bettering one another. As this chapter of our lives comes to a close, it is important that we not let the presence of community in our lives fade. Yes, after tonight, our community as the Shanley class of 2017 will no longer be physically present in our everyday lives. But this presents a chance for us to take what we have learned as deacons and spread this attitude of self-giving wherever we go. Wherever life takes us next, fellow graduates, my hope for us as a class is that we will cultivate a service-oriented community in all that we do. In college, in our friendships, in the workplace, in our church, I hope that we will not forget what it means to be a deacon and that serving others does not simply stop when we leave the building tonight. During our time at school, we have been a part of an incredible community led by many great teachers, administrators, and clergy. Forever, we as graduates of Shanley will be indebted to these individuals for teaching us how to be deacons. Tonight, as we celebrate our graduation, it is important that we not forget these people who helped us get where we are today. Particularly tonight, I think it is important that we recognize Shanley teacher, Mrs. Gail Ringy, who at the end of this year will retire after 43 years of teaching, 30 of which have been spent with our network. Starting at St. Anthony's Middle School, later renamed Sullivan, and eventually moving over to Shanley, Mrs. Ringy has devoted most of her professional career to helping students in our network learn and grow. Her most recent role at Shanley, however, demonstrated so well what it means to be a deacon, as she served as the student assistance coordinator, leading the Shanley Resource Room, where she helped students who needed extra assistance to succeed in school, as well as those enrolled in online classes not otherwise offered at Shanley. Mrs. Ringy is the epitome of what it means to be a deacon. Her incredibly upbeat attitude, willingness to help, and dedication to serving others will be truly missed. Please join me in thanking Mrs. Ringy for her dedicated service to Catholic education.
So tonight, fellow graduates, I hope that we as a class do not forget who we are as we leave Shanley. Perhaps the Deacons may not have been the most intimidating mascot in our area when it came to sports. However, when you compare it to the Valley City Highliners who are named after a railroad bridge that crosses the Cheyenne River, <laughs> perhaps we were intimidating sometimes. All that aside, being a deacon is something of which we can be incredibly proud. Tonight, as we leave Shanley, we will go our separate ways and move on to new, exciting adventures. The next chapter of our lives will be a time of uncertainty, but also a time of great opportunity. After tonight, we will no longer roam the halls, which we've so long known well. We will no longer compete in sports together, participate in school clubs together, make music together, or learn together in class but we will forever, fellow graduates, share an unbreakable bond. We may no longer be high schoolers, but we will forever be deacons. Thank you. Once again, graduates, I want to offer a word of congratulations to each one of you. As I said this morning, uh, it's a joyful day, and I hope it's a day that you'll always remember. It's a day that I know you've been looking forward to, and I'm sure that it's a day that will usher you into great things yet to come. At another graduation ceremony in another time and place, a graduation speaker said to the class, I wish you discontent, which kind of puzzled everyone who was there. I wish you discontent. Not the kind of discontent that leads to unhappiness, but the kind of discontent that prevents you from being satisfied with things just the way they are. I hope that when you go forth from here, you'll always look for ways to make things better for others and for yourself too. Always strive to reach a little higher and ultimately to reach towards God. And in that, you're going to find your ultimate happiness. So with that, I would ask everyone to please stand and we'll say a final prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving Father, we thank you for calling us together as your family. We thank you in a special way for this class of 2017. These graduates who finished their time at Shanley High School and who now will go forth to do even greater things in your kingdom. We ask you to bless them always, to walk with them, to carry them when they need to be carried, and to always love them. We ask you, Lord, to lead them into true greatness, the greatness of service, towards their brothers and sisters, towards all humanity. And we ask you, Lord, to lead them ultimately to that holiness which will allow them to enter in your, into your eternal kingdom and to live in eternal joy forever and ever. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. God bless you.